Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. It is April 10th, 2020. Uh, today, as you've probably seen if you've been on Facebook, it is Observed Siblings Day. Uh, it is also Good Friday. Uh, it is also National Hug Your Dog Day. So if you have your dog and you are at your home office, uh, remember to give your dog a hug today. It is also Global Work From Home Day. How ironic that we were all stuck working at home, but it is Global Work From Home Day as well, uh, and it is observed annually on April 10th. Um, some just basic news going around the world. Zoom uh, has uh, the Zoom teachers, uh, educational uh, facilities out in Singapore have banned the use of Zoom uh, for the time being. So Zoom continues to see some troubles ahead. Uh, there's also an influx of Zoom competitors coming to market to try to capture some of the market share as Zoom is being banned um, from you know enterprises, corporations, education, etc. Uh, they are still in the midst of you know trying to right their ship. Uh, the last update was you know they are working on improving the security, enhancing security. Uh, they've made some big hires. Uh, to help them see that path moving forward. Uh, governments around the world continue to warn about COVID-19 phishing attacks. Uh, a couple of days ago, I showed you a demo. I showed you a kind of a preview of some of the common phishing emails that I am seeing uh, and TechWise Group is seeing from our clients and you know our um, potential clients. Uh, so there's definitely an influx of phishing emails. Governments around the world are all catching on. <laughs> but what I want to talk a little bit about today, um, Washington, D.C., uh, the District of Columbia, has recently passed legislation or updated uh, section, uh, it's what, Title 28 uh, on their uh, compliance or breach notification law and it goes into effect 30 days from signing it was signed March 26 so the end of April you're going to see some updated uh, compliance requirements coming from the DC that's important for everybody to kind of be aware of uh, before I get into that an um, interesting piece is the DOJ a, lot of um, on a recent DOJ um, has called you know, at a hearing uh, early March, uh, you know, at the Senate Judiciary Committee, um, Deputy Assistant Attorney General um, uh, the, the Adam Hickey uh, called on upon Congress to enact legislation that would create a uniform nationwide data breach disclosure law. Right now, what we have is upwards of 50 different breach compliance notification laws across the state of, you know, across the country. Um, and that's not counting European GDPR, things like that. Uh, so each state right now is kind of creating their own compliance requirements, their breach notification law. So each state has that in place. And then you have compliance regulations like HIPAA, um, you know, the financial industry has Gramley. Um, there, there's just a tremendous amount of stuff that if you are breached, you're going to spend more money trying to figure out who was affected and what states or municipalities are they a resident of so you know how to properly report it because each state is different and that's truly where you know it's not just what is different how you breach but what is classified as you know breachable content how you have to report it what timeline you have to report it what the potential damages is so each state is different today uh, just because DC uh, is, is coming into enactment here soon, I wanted to cover just a few things of it. Um, you know, first and foremost, like most of these for the government, is they exempt the government. Uh, so, obviously, yeah, um, don't be worried if they breach your data, I guess, right? Uh, acquisition of data has been rendered secure, including through encryption or redaction. Um so be so as to be unusable by authorized third party. Uh, so if you're using encryption, if your servers are encrypted and you have a <coughs> high degree of faith that that encryption is not going to be decrypted, it is you know you do not have to report that as a breach. This would include laptops. If a laptop is stolen, and it has client employee data, 
uh, personnel data, um, that is has to be reportable unless you can prove that laptop was breached and the user didn't have their password written on the underside of it. Uh, and here, the last line, unless any information obtained has the potential to compromise the effectiveness of the security protection preventing unauthorized access. So that's outlining, you know, section B, the term breach of security of the system. Um, personal information. Uh, so here's the definition of what DC sees as personal information. An individual's first name, first initial and last name, or any other personal identifier, identifier which in combination with any of the following information. Social security, individual taxpayer ID number, passport, driver's license, DC issued on a government document commonly used to verify identity, an account number, credit card, debit card, uh, any other number or code or combination of number or codes, such as an identification number, security code, access code, or password that allows access to or use of an individual's financial or credit account, medical information, genetic information, health information, that's kind of a no-brainer with HIPAA. Uh, they include biometric data, uh, so this is fingerprint, voice print, genetic print, retina or iris image or other unique biological characteristic. Uh, you see a lot of updated breach notification laws, including biometric data now, as a lot of them, including Pennsylvania's when it was written, didn't really get into the biometrics. Um, any combination of data elements, including a sub um, that would enable a person to commit identity theft without reference to a person's name. Um, a username or email address in combination with password, security question and answer, or other means of authentication or a combination of data elements included. Uh, so there's an awful lot in there that is br considered breachable content. So if you have your shared secret questions and potential answers with an email address breached, that is a reportable breach. You know, healthcare information, credit card, bank accounts. There's so much now that you have to take in consideration if you're working with the city of DC in that area and you have customers there. Um, to continue on, um, the notice shall be made in the most expedited manner um, if the breach affects 50 or more district residents. So right there's your threshold. So if you have information of 50 or more district residents in any of your systems, this is a piece, you know, Title 28 is something you need to familiarize yourself with. Um, you have to include in the notice, so say you are breached, 50 or more district residents, uh, you have to include the name contact information of whoever or the entity reporting the breach, the name contact information of the person or entity that experienced the breach. Uh, so that's if it's a third party. So if your financial payroll company experienced a breach, uh, you would have to disclose you know, who caused the breach. The nature of the breach of the security system, the types of personal information compromised, uh, the number of district residents affected, the cause of the breach, including relationship between the person or entity that experienced the breach, the remedial action taken, uh, by the person or entity to include steps taken to assist district residents affected by the breach. Uh, so that's not the technical remedy. It is the what can they do to, you know, make sure that they're taking the proper action. The date and time frame of the breach, if known. The address and location of your corporate headquarters, if it's outside the district. Any knowledge of foreign country involvement. Uh, a sample of the notice must be provided to district residents. Um, to the Attorney General's office. Um, the notice required under subsection B1 of this section shall not be delayed on the grounds that the total number of district residents affected by the breach has not yet been ascertained. So if there's a possibility that I know there was a breach, there's a possibility my DC information was breached, but I don't know if it's quite 50, well, as you're counting, you have to assume that you're going to cross that threshold um, the way I'm reading this legislation. Um, if you are Gramley Biley Act, uh, which is the financial or HIPAA, uh, for the most part, the only thing that changes for you as it, a lot of this covers the same stuff is you just have to notify the Office of the Attorney General of the District of Columbia uh, in addition to the HIPAA and uh, Gramley Biley Act. Um, it also applies to your third-party vendors. Uh, I mentioned that a minute ago. 
Um, you know, you should ensure security with your third parties. How are they securing your data? Um, you know, are appropriate to the nature of the personal information disclosed, reasonably designed to protect personal information. When a person or entity is destroying records, um, make sure that they're securing it, securely destroying it. Uh, so often, you know, I can drive down the street on trash day and see computers out there and I guarantee there's probably hard drives in there and those home computers probably aren't encrypted. Uh, the nature and size of the business, um, cost available technology. Um, so the penalty, um, you know, when a breach requires notification, um, you have to provide as a business or as an entity, it's not just a business, associations, nonprofits, etc., all fall under this. Um, you have to, if social security number or taxpayer identification number is included, you have to provide identity theft pr protection services at no cost to any such district resident for a period of no less than 18 months. Uh, also, uh, there is payable to the consumer, there is a penalty, um, and it's treble damages, which is times three. So whatever the financial damage is, times three, or $1,500 per violation per consumer, uh, payable to the consumer, whichever is greater. Um, so the big thing that doesn't include pain and suffering, uh, dignitary damages, you know, those are kind of self-explanatory across the board in these. Uh, so you can't say my pain and suffering was side effect of it. But more and more municipalities, more and more states are updating these breach notification laws. Um, and it's only creating more confusion in the industry that's already kind of just confused. Uh, with everything going on with COVID-19, uh, coronavirus, I really don't want to distract away from what needs to happen with that. But as your workplace has expanded to the modern world of work from home, work for anywhere type of a environment, data breaches are going to happen in 2020. Probably a record number of data breaches are going to happen in 2020. Uh, an important thing to note, most ransomware variants that I examined uh, actually have a breach component in there. So before it encrypts your data, it's actually taking data based on search terms and offloading it to somewhere else uh, outside of your environment. So just by getting ransomware, you could probably be considered that a potential breach has occurred. Um, so that's that. If you have more questions on the DC Title 28 or uh, CCPA, Massachusetts uh, Security, Pennsylvania's breach notification law, feel free, shoot me an email, scott at techwisegroup.com. Would love to talk to you about it. Uh, but I do want to leave you on a kind of a different note uh, instead of, you know, the legal note. With us being, you know, three weeks to a month into this uh, whole coronavirus work from home environment, you know, a lot of people have kind of asked, uh, how has it affected internet performance? Um, obviously, you have more people at home, remote learning, your kids are all connected with, you know, these Zooms or Microsoft Teams or whatever, uh, more Netflix, Disney Plus, just all the streaming going on. Internet obviously has to be impacted one way or another. But in the United States, overall, we're doing pretty good. Uh, USA. <coughs> In California, they saw a 46.5% uh, increase in traffic change uh, for internet traffic. So a lot more usage of the internet going on in California. Download speeds actually increased 1.2%, so that's a good thing. Uh, looking at Michigan, uh, they saw a 37.9% increase in traffic. Uh, their download speeds actually decreased 16%. Uh, so not so good. The New York, New Jersey metro areas saw a 44.6 increase with a 5.5% uh, speed change, um, a negative. So the internet uh, is regionally built. The internet is strong uh, here in the United States. Uh, as you can see, we're amazingly still able to do things like this. Uh, and you probably really haven't noticed a difference in the internet. So that's what I have for you. Have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, try to you know play a board game, uh, have some fun with family, or um, find yourself onto uh, you know a Facebook meeting or um, a Zoom meeting, playing some trivia with some friends. So that's what I have for this week. Have a great weekend.